Hello guys, welcome to the next episode of VexIQ Tutorials. Today, I will be teaching you all about chains, treads, and sprockets. So this is the smallest sprocket. A eight-toothed sprocket has nothing but the teeth and then the shaft area that goes there. Next is the 16th tooth sprocket. It's a bit bigger, look at how much bigger it is. And it has 16 teeth and has a little more open space. So that will go right there. This is the 24 tooth sprocket, not here. It has some more holes. You can attach some, some things that you want to on here. The 30 tooth sprocket, 32 teeth sprocket, it has some little lines across like this, and it'll go over here. And then the biggest sprocket is the two by, I mean not two by, but a 40 tooth sprocket. It has some lines here too, and it also has holes on the very outside, which can add a lot of other parts. And it'll go right there. Now, this is chain. Chain is very cool to play with. You can spin it up into like a ball, like this, and then like squish it. But it's mostly used in conjunction with sprockets to create designs where you want a little bit of distance. I'll be showing you how. The chain will always be on top of the sprocket. So what you start with is just a regular shaft, like normal things. But you can't just put on a sprocket, take this sprocket. You can't always, you can't just put it on the thing and then immediately attach chain on it because this won't work. So what you should be doing is making some distance so you can put other stuff on it. For example, first you have to put on a th first you have to put on a thick spacer before the before the sprocket thick spacer then thin spacer then sprocket so you have a little bit of space between both sides and then you will have to add another thin spacer and another thick spacer. A thick spacer. So this is, you have enough distance here to be able to put on the chain and the chain won't be interfering with anything else. So you see there's just a little bit of space on, oops, but there's a little bit of space on both sides. And you can put, on, put other beams here and the chain won't rub against them. So that is how you apply chains onto shafts. Now in my opinion, one of the things that's even better than chains is called treads. So treads are pretty much chains. As you can see, it has the chains little design over here with all the stuff but it also has these pieces on them. And what these pieces do is you can attach pins onto them, and then further from attaching pins, you can attach beams onto tank treads. And then they can be lifted up and down, almost like an elevator. So putting on two pins here, let's just say two pins, and a little beam, So now we have this, and then putting on this shaft here. And now comes the part where we will need the second part, the second shaft. So I will quickly build that and show you. So this is a little contraption I made about the tank treads. It doesn't work right now because obviously it's pretty bad and lazy. So if you want to try this out by yourself, I'd recommend you go get some. If not, that's okay too but it's better to get them and you can try this out 
And if you apply a motor to one of the shafts, for example, if you put on this one, then it will be a 1 to 3 gear ratio because it's 8 to 24 tooth. And always remember that the ratio still applies such a, uh, like the gear ratios. For example, this is an 8 to 24, meaning it's a 1 to 3 gear ratio. So keep that in mind if you want to make your elevator stronger or faster. One thing I've seen people do with sprockets is they actually use them like gears. So gears are supposed to be touching each other like this. And when one spins, it will spin the other one. So that is not what you do with sprockets. What you do with sprockets is you have to use chains to spin them and they can spin at a distance. So if you don't want to waste any shafts and gears, you can just put two sprockets like this, chain them together with a piece of chain, and then there you have your two wheels already and you don't have to waste any shafts which can be used on your arm or something else. So this is why sprockets are useful. And in my opinion, they're, they're almost as useful as gears, but gears can be used in tight spaces where you don't, you don't always have the space to be able to use sprockets and then chain them. Also, <coughs> sprockets aren't going to be that good for much unless you have a lot of chain because chain goes, goes down a lot faster than you think. So you might have to buy a few extra packs of 200 chains if you're using sprockets a lot. So sprockets can also spin like fast. Like not not I'm, I mean not by a motor but like this. Also tank tread is really fun to play with. If you have some I recommend you play with it. You can do stuff like this or like unravel unravel it here. However you pronounce it. And spin it up this mesh it together or you can play like yep it's fun to play with so even if you're not going to buy them for robots you can still at least get them for when you need them and you can play with them while you're waiting to come up with a good design. So yeah, thanks for watching this very short tutorial on sprockets, chains, and treads. And you can apply this to your robot too right now. Because with the unlimited expansion, you can extend your robots as far as you want. And it's not going to be very good to use gears on them. So sprockets will be coming in very handy. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I hope you found these tips useful. And until next time, play with your treads.